So yes, guys, I'm officially back on YouTube. I just took some time off. I took a break. I wanted to reflect on myself and reflect on the type of content I wanted to bring on this channel. So I came more prepared and I came with really interesting topics. Disclaimer, I just want to say that um, everything I'm going to say today is really based on my own opinion so feel free to uh, express your own and just say oh i agree or disagree here's why i'm really open for uh, feedback i thought it could be interesting to have a discussion on how horror cinema is actually uh, portraying people dealing with mental illness um and i feel like before getting into that we should just maybe break down why like what's the purpose of horror cinema like why does it exist so i feel like we we're gonna better understand um the topic of mental illness and horror if we understand why why was it created initially horror is a way in cinema to really represent like a trauma so something very traumatic um it could be also a way to talk about injustices um social issues racism homophobia sexism um so it's really about a way to provoke provoke a reaction so there's like other kind of films that are also going to bring an emotion so if you watch a comedy or drama action films you're going to have different emotions but horror is how can we bring it to a place where people don't always want to talk about it so it's it's like a sphere of cinema where sometimes we're going to talk about taboo subjects we're, we're going to talk about something that's very um um sometimes we try to avoid so yes trauma our fears our um our inner demons and even sometimes our health so either physical or mental health and sometimes we're just trying to blend in and we try to avoid talking about what actually our struggles are and what our uh, trauma are so I feel like horror is is that door you use whenever you want to talk about those subjects so that's why um so not a, all of them are actually um using shock to um to make you react so sometimes some of them are going to be like slow like a slow burn to like um make you think after the film like okay so this is talking about this you're going to understand a different message than just violence blood jump scares scary monsters scary people some of them are actually trying to say something so if you actually look closer i feel like you are gonna understand either something about yourself or someone else's situation and for me that's really strong and that's why maybe i'm so attracted to horror films because i feel like um they actually bring me to they actually give me another perspective another perspective on someone else's life and and this way i'm actually be able to really better understand my own so that's something i'm very interested in and that's why today i'm asking you to look closer whenever you're watching a film so it doesn't have to be just for horror but maybe just look at if there is a um if there's a deeper meaning to the film than what then maybe just what you're seeing so sometimes it's going to be very explicit and it's uh, topics and it's um, morals but sometimes it's also very subtle and you have to read between the lines so i just want to uh, invite you to really analyze whenever you're, you're seeing a film where someone it lives a traumatic experience or uh, deals with like a growing mental illness that I feel like 
like in movies they are sometimes labeled as crazy people um sometimes they become violent sometimes they become like serial killers because they're there's something traumatic that happened and their youth that makes them uh go like on a killing spree so i just want to yeah like give you like another perspective on how some films are actually approaching mental illnesses. I gathered like a few films that I saw and I thought that were interesting to have a discussion about and different illnesses starting with schizophrenia, eating disorder, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, psychosis, PTSD also known as post-traumatic st stress disorder, depression, DID also known as dissociative identity disorder so these are um actually we're gonna see those in the film i'm gonna present later on disclaimer i'm gonna talk about specific film so yes spoiler alerts so first one up on my list is a indie horror film from 1962 so it's called carnival of souls and this one is very interesting because it's uh, not only just a great film but it's a film that is um indirectly talking about depression so the main character is a woman um who uh, lives like she <sighs> she's kind of a loner she um she has a small job as a uh, organ player in a church she doesn't talk much and we can see that sometimes she's kind of zoning out she doesn't really want to interact with anyone she wants to be by herself but at some point she's also trying to go on a date with a guy so she's trying to meet with people mingle with people but she at the same time she doesn't want to do that so so it's never mentioned in the film we never talk about it i don't know if it, it's never mentioned because at the time it was something that's very taboo or um it wasn't the focus of the film but i felt like uh, that was um that, that was a good depiction like i said this is my own interpretation but i feel like this is a good representation of someone who is uh, dealing with depression. So a more modern representation of someone dealing with depression is the 2014 horror film um, The Babadook. So in this case, um, The Babadook is like a ghost creature like that a woman is... She has like sometimes hallucination of uh, the creature at night. She has a hard time sleeping. She, sometimes she feels very disconnected from uh, what's happening around her. She's having really a hard time with her son who uh, has um, uh, who is like a uh, a troubled child. And so, in the film, like she receives like a book, and it's so. In the book she receives, it's like a creature that is like uh, asking, let me in, I'm gonna get in no matter what. So no matter what you do, I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna get you. So in this way, um, the Babadook is like a metaphor for um, her inner monster, like her inner demon, which is depression. So, so even at the end, remember when she is like feeding uh, the creature, so she never fully vanquishes the babadook like she just get it out of her but it's still living with them so i feel like it's a message saying that you cannot get rid of a mental illness but you can um live with it and you can take over you can be the master of it so she is feeding the creature but she's still uh like uh herself so the next film I want to mention is the movie from the same director who did Evil Dead and the um, Spider-Man films is Drag Me to Hell. So 
Um, I gotta say this one, um, initially it wasn't on my list, but actually I got information from uh, Cracked.com and it was saying how Drag Me to Hell is talking about uh, eating disorders and they were actually making um, uh, different points. Like, So I'm gonna read them out. So it kind of makes sense if we, uh, if we, uh, if we analyze the film deeper, so the main character, Christine, was a chubby child. She lies about her eating habits. The demons vomit on her and force things down her throat. So also when she tries to eat, the food becomes horrifying. No one else can see what's happening to her. I feel like it really makes sense that the film is talking about eating disorder. Um, so having that information in mind, I feel like, yes, it makes sense, even though it wasn't maybe the main subject of, of the film, or maybe it was, but it was never mentioned. So it's actually, um, it's a nice angle to look at the film and it's um, giving like another dimension uh, on this film. So. Another one on my list is the iconic film from the 90s, Misery. So this one is from a book from Stephen King with the infamous Kathy Bates as Annie Wilkes. So I knew that Annie wasn't a, uh, let's say, a stable character. I knew she was... Um, so I wasn't sure what, uh, which disorder she had. So I kind of Googled and according to Wikipedia, I'm going to just read out a small Walks section. Walks has bipolar disorder, a severe borderline personality disorder with schizoid, schizotypal and obsessive compulsive features and sadomasochism. Yeah. So so yes, after reading this description, I can tell you that Annie is a very colorful character uh, and I, all I can say is Kathy Bates, I think she did an amazing job at um, um, representing like the sphere of different disorders she is dealing with. Um, so yes, uh, let me know if you feel like this is like good representation even though it's very extreme i'm not too familiar with uh, those but um for me uh that was a good that was a good, a good example so mr um mr willie decided to join us but we're just gonna continue on our program so um I wanted to talk about uh, films that were dealing with DID, so dissociative, dissociative identity disorder, so people dealing with multiple uh, personalities, um, such as the film Split, um, and also there's the movie Identity, and uh, the iconic film uh, Psycho as well. So, of course, it's going to be presented in a way that uh, we're just gonna show the most extreme cases in films because I guess it's the way of like to entertain people and just show how extreme uh, the disorder can be but for some it's a misrepresentation so I was actually reading more on on this and the professional was saying that less than like three percent of people with this disorder are actually violent so what you're seeing seeing on the screen is not an accurate de depiction of like what most people are when they are dealing with this. So in the case of the movie Black Swan, she uh, is a ballerina who uh, puts herself in a lot of pressure because she really wants to be perfection when it comes to having two roles, two roles. So um, in this case, I think she really. Uh, develop like a um, psychosis because she has like al hallucinations she sees or hears things that aren't actually real because if we actually look at the description psychosis is a condition that affects the way your brain process in processes information it causes you to lose touch with reality you might see hear or believe things that aren't real 
So I think that's actually exactly what's happening in the case of Black Swan. So I think it's also the case in the movie Pen. So this one is a very unknown classic. Well, yeah, I mean, for me, it's a classic. Uh, classic Canadian horror film that is um, also depicting someone who is dealing with psychosis. So um, in this case, it's more due to a uh, trauma because he witnesses uh, um, its parents having like a sexual intercourse with like a plastic doll and it kind of triggered something in his mind. And later on, um, when the doll is actually um, damaged, he has like a psychosis break and it just makes him become the doll. So it's like another extreme case. But um, yes, so uh, in those two cases, I thought it was interesting to look how um, psychosis is um, is explored in those two films, but the um, the cause is not the same. So another film I thought it was interesting to talk about is the movie Repulsion. Um, so this one is um, talking about a character dealing with schizophrenia. And um, so this one came out in 1965. So um, I feel like at the time it was never really um, mentioned because I I have a feeling that at the time a woman who has a, a mental uh, disorder was something very taboo, something not uh, treated and or mistreated as well. I, f I feel like um, they weren't giving um, the right treatment for, um, for those people at the time. I... I thought the movie explored the, um, the the character in a nice way because it's um, it's very slow and it's not um, like it's very um, how can I say like it's the what we're actually seeing is like the um, like what the character is actually living so. Um, Sometimes we're going to see that cracks in the wall representing kind of her, her um, sanity kind of like falling apart. And at some point she um, she hallucinates um, people raping her. She uh, hallucinates like hands grabbing her. She is out of um, out of touch with a reality. She uh, she's gonna bring like a dead rabbit to her job. She's gonna let the water run um, for her bath. She is um, afraid of any contact with a man when she's on a date. Like she she's very zoning out at some points and. Um, um, I feel like the performance of uh, Catherine Deneuve is actually um, interesting because it wasn't over the top and um, I'm not too familiar with the uh, the disorder but I felt like um, it has it had like nice elements so um, for me the performance was convincing enough um, to uh, really tell a story so last but not least on my list is Jacob's Ladder. So this one is really talking about PTSD. So um, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. We're following a main character a, who uh, was actually uh, in the Vietnam War. And we're really seeing how um, the effects of the war is affecting its presence. So he uh, hallucinates. He imagined complete scenes where he is being tortured he imagined um, um, creatures out to get him and it's a very disturbing film because the way we're showing the hallucination is it's i mean it's it's plausible and we understand where um where the trauma is actually coming from and so I feel like the uh, performer performance of the the main actor was um, very convincing, and um, the way the movie was actually presenting the hallucination is um, 
was very disturbing. So, um, of course, I, I feel like we're always um, trying to portray the most extreme uh, um, aspect of or the side effects of this trauma, this uh, PTSD. Um, so, of course, it's going to be different for everyone. So I feel like this movie is really worth a watch because it's one of those who uh, puts a hard twist on um, this disorder and um, it's very, like I said, disturbing and it's, um, we're, we're very, we're, we have really that compassion for the main character because we can really feel his distress, his, and the way like the war really damaged him and, um, I uh, I would recommend this one for sure. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you uh, learn something today. I um, I honestly did. So doing my research, I was like, okay, well, this is um, this is an interesting way of presenting something and uh, well, presenting um, a mental illness and um. um my main goal is really to give you like another perspective and by uh, having this different perspective I really feel like it's going to help you understand uh, how people are actually uh, trying to say uh, express emotions or um, talk about their trauma or their uh, injustices, discrimination, like I said. So, um, and this way, when you understand people better, you actually understand yourself better and you understand where you stand with those. So, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Good night.